F1s are a really tricky fish to catch. They really don't get enough respect in the fishing world, to be honest. They're as close to a roach as I've ever encountered on any venue, really. Initially, when they're first stopped, they can be quite easy to catch, but once they've been in a long time and they've seen it all before, they become really tricky, very cagey fish. So terminal tackle is something that you really need to address, and if you go down the lines of silverfish fishing, you won't go far wrong. First of all, hooks. Small patterns. 22s, 20s, nice light hooks, uh, patterns of my choice, silver baggers, carp baggers, but there's lots of hooks out there, it's your own personal choice, but I just recommend that you stay among the lines of 22s to 20s, nice light patterns, because you're dealing with small baits, maggots, expanders, you want to stay light, you don't want fish to feel any resistance, after that you want to be getting down nice and light on your hook lengths 010, 08, depending on the time of year. If you stay around that mark when you're F1 fishing, you won't go far wrong. There'll be bite after bite after bite. A real game changer that really altered the landscape of commercial fishing with puller bungs and puller kits and that's really allowed us to fish much lighter and target much more finicky species that really just want to be not really want to give you any bites on the hardest of days so you get down onto these finer diameters little hooks but you, you've always been worried that if you hooked a bigger fish you were never going to get out but puller kits and puller bungs are a must really when especially when you're targeting f1s just in case you do up that better stamp but you'll be really surprised just how many big fish you can land 08, 010 diameter line is a lot stronger than you think if you balance your tackle out. And one of the best tips I could give anyone, if they don't fish light very often, get some puller bungs into your top kits, or get yourself some side pullers or stripper kits, as some people call them. Get out on the bank and practice and surprise yourself just how many big fish you can actually catch on balanced tackle. The elastic I use is a Matrix Hollow 8, I'll sometimes step it up to a hollow 10, but very rarely throughout a commercial year when I'm commercial fishing do I step above those grades of elastic. I have ultimate confidence in landing fish, generally of any size, just takes that little bit more time, but really you'll get used to it and you'll see that less resistance on the fish, they don't get so aggravated, they don't charge off so much, sometimes double figure carp and really big F1s, they just come straight to the net because they don't realise just like any resistance, they don't feel it. If you're hooking them with a 14s or 16s elastic, like I see some anglers doing, they hook straight in, bang, the resistance is there, they charge off and they smash the rigs and they think, oh, I've fouled up to fish nine times out of 10. That's just the fish just reacting because he's being pulled one way and you want to go the other. Pellets are my number one choice when it comes to F1 fishing. You can catch them on lots of other baits, but pellets are a constant right across the country. Pure and simply because they're a farm fed fish and they already know what pellets are. But the way to get the best out of your pellets is to just break away from the norm really. Do you really want to just sit putting a four mil on or a six mil on all the time? I always carry them and they do have their place, but at certain times you can gain that little bit of an edge by fishing a one and a half or a two mil expander, just like that, they match up lovely to micros as you feed. But I always like to get my micro pellets in a position where if I wanted to, I could hook those. And that's where the smaller hooks come into play again. That 22's hook marries up perfectly with a little micro pellet, the nice small expanders. I also soften the four mil feed to a point where I can feed it and actually hook it. So I'm matching that feed up with the hook bait, again, creating a chance to catch the craftiest of fish, which is what F1s can be. When I really think that they're really confident, there's days when hard pellets come into play. And basically, I'll just band those up with a nice little bulk. Token gesture, you just put a six on, because after a four, 
has been in the water some time, it will start to just blow up that little bit and it, you'll find that it'll six or marry perfect and that can get you that little extra bite. Maggots are something that I always just take along because when the peg starts to really lift off and you're bagging, if you get to a situation where you don't want to be striking bait off, you can put two maggots on, three maggots on and they'll just nail maggots every time that they go in. But there's more than just a world of six and four mil expanders out there when you're F1 fishing. There's much more you can do just like that. Float patterns. One of the best tips I can give any angler when they're F1 fishing is to use float patterns that they're familiar with. So often I see anglers opening up rig box after rig box. Floats, floats, floats. Everyone collects floats, but there's so many floats that people don't use. It just amazes me. Stick to the patterns that you know and learn those floats inside out. Once you've realized exact movements on bristles of your floats, you'll hit invariably more bites. Two patterns I like to use, a Series 7, carbon stem, nice bright hollow tip, rounded body, and a Series 1, diamond shaped body, again, carbon stem, hollow tip, and the key is to just get them just under that surface tension, and then what I like to do is just get a little dab of bristle grease, and just simply just touch it on the top of the tip, so it just brings it up, just that little touch, so literally, I'd have the tiniest amount of float showing and then any movement then be little bits of quivers, slight lifts but the slightest of touches, how sensitive some of these F1s can be bang, they will show and that will come to being familiar with your float patterns and getting them dotted right down then the key is the shotting just a couple of basic patterns, I see lots of fancy shotting patterns out there strung out all the way through a block and six droppers, keep it dead simple. All I like to do is a strung out bulk for a block six inches from my hook. Dead simple, then it's all about lowering that rig in, nice and simple, and presenting it to the fish properly. Don't just drop it in as if you're just throwing it over the fish's head. You'll get foul hookers, and it doesn't look natural, you won't get bites quite as quickly as if you're putting it in and laying it in nicely to the fish. F1s can be anywhere in your swim. They can be in a margin, such as this peg, there's an island. They can be where it's flat, right in the middle of the track. They can be on ledges. But it's all about getting the best out of that swim. You need to remember that you're feeding particles, pellets. They can easily get drifting about, knocked about by undertow, fish coming in and disturbing them. So they can move. When I set up my peg, I try to imagine a cross from north to south, east to west, so that I've got a metre either side. And I like to inch the rig, starting from one side to the other, and I try to find the best area to lay my rig in and work that through. It's constantly working the float because at the end, it's an inert bait. It's not like a maggot, it's not like a worm. It needs to be worked. So you're trying to get that little bit of movement to entice a bite. So if I'm fishing an island, if it goes quiet in front of me, I'll move a metre to the left or a metre to the right. That applies to a margin in front of me. I might go a metre past the feed, a metre short, a metre to the right, a metre to the left. Because these fish, they come in, they turn, they kick up, one might get spooked. The area of bait starts to gradually spread and fish then start coming in at different angles. It's staying amongst them is the key. Just keep dropping it down one hole and waiting for it to happen with no movement whatsoever. You'll end up with less fish. You need to keep active, keep working, keep inching it across and keep moving. One of the things that I see a lot of anglers do is not lay the rigging properly into the peg. When the fish are feeding and they're frenzied, you, you could get away with it. You can drop it in and they'll scream off with it. But on harder days, when you need to try and get the best out of your peg, because you're not always on that screamer, you need to present a bait properly. And the right way to do it is to just lay the bait in, let it fall through the water correctly, as if it was a free offering, so you can fool that fish into taking your hook bait. Lots of anglers I see 
they just make the mistake, they get so excited, they catch a few fish, they ship back out quickly, and they get out and they drop. And everything just falls in one dirty, great, horrible heap, no good whatsoever. What you need to be doing is just a nice steady, just out past your target area, so it all comes out in a nice straight arc, and as the rig starts to straighten, you just lower her down, nice and gently, so that everything engages. And you'll find that when you start doing this, the float can just carry on. Sometimes it, the fish interact straight in, intercept, bang, you're away. Imagine if you're in a restaurant and someone walked up with your meal, come straight up to your table, and just went, there you go, sir, splat. You'd be like, what's happened here? I ain't eating that. So let's treat the fish with a little bit more respect. Let's just put those, you know, they're not as daft as everyone thinks. Serve it up properly to them. Like I touched on before, F1s are a farm-fed fish. Same as any fish, they're used to eating pellets. So at some point during their early life, they've had someone walk into that little fish farm, crash pellets on the surface. They know when it's feeding time at the zoo. You can recreate that in your, in your swim, in your peg, at any time of day. If it's not quite responding, some venues allow you to tap, so you could tap your pole on the surface, that can bring fish in. Some venues allow you to splash water, again you're making more noise. Thrashing pellets from a height, shaking them in from your pot, that little bit of disturbance from bait it in the surface just, just rings that little alarm and that trigger in the instinct that they're born with that something's happening, it's feeding time, let's go and have a look. They're not always there waiting for you, it's down to you sometimes to make it happen. If you want to watch more Matrix videos, click here. If you want to subscribe to the Matrix channel, click here.